Peter Greenway is famously critical of film as a medium. His background in painting led him to conclude that the focus of any visual medium should be in its visuals. That appearance and meaning through it holds the greatest value of all. Images hold immortality beyond words. Naturally, the story of the belly of an architect deals with Greenway's own introspection on how he himself, as an artist, can grapple with his own creations. How art and the pursuit of visual beauty is both important and dangerous. Welcome to Sessions on Cinema. Be warned, spoilers ahead. The Belly of an Architect is about an architect named Cracklight, who moves to Rome on a year-long construction of an exhibition for his personal hero, another architect by the name of Boulay. The film opens with Cracklight and his wife having sex on the train to Rome, cutting back and forth between them and the Roman countryside filled with graves. Nature, sex, and death constantly fill our view. When they arrive, Cracklight is celebrated for his taking on the project. His work is compared to that of Bollet by his associates. Both are described as constructing carnivorous architecture that have excess cholesterol. Cracklight's response is that there's no excess fat on his work, both having invaluable centers of gravity. While he says this, and throughout the rest of the film, we are shown shots of great symmetry with the focal point of the frame, usually being center frame, or what you might describe as having invaluable centers of gravity. During the dinner celebration, Cranklight's wife is flirted with by Caspasian, one of the men who has control of the funding for Cranklight's exhibition. His wife quickly grows tired of Cranklight's distractions with work and takes up Caspasian as a lover. She says at one point, everything is permissible for art. Art first, our marriage second. But his work isn't the only distraction. He develops growing stomach pains that become detrimental to his health. Not only does Cracklight's jealousy for Caspasian come from his relationships with his wife, but also from Caspasian's able-bodied youth, a youth that matches his wife's. A youth that has been far removed. His newfound obsession is to construct a new belly for himself, one without flab or pain. Cranklight's frustration with his wife eventually leads him to cheating on her, but it originally rears its ugly head when he tries to force feed her a fig, but much like his child when they have tried to conceive in the past, her body won't take it. Only after extended separation does she start to show signs of pregnancy, planting doubts about who is truly the father. Her pregnancy rarely phases Cracklight as he continues to sink deeper into his work and illness. An illness that manifests itself in remarkably similar ways to the symptoms of a pregnancy. As the film draws to a close, Cracklight believes he is plagued by stomach cancer. His wife has left him for Caspasian, and his year-long exhibition has been bastardized. His obsessions get the better of him, and he commits suicide by jumping off the road of his exhibition. Just as he does, his wife has a miscarriage, implying that the child was likely Cracklight's, and that her body rejected him yet again. There is a dark underlying comedy to the way that he kills himself. Again, relating to the notion of an invaluable center of gravity that Caspasian needed to believe. He needed to believe that Bollet was an unappreciated legend, that despite everyone referring to Bollet as an unknown artist, that he would be the one to make his greatness known. That someone would do the same for him. The final shot of the film is that of a spinning top that spins unbalanced, the ultimate truth to Cracklight's ambitions. Even if his wife's child was his own, he wouldn't have been its father, just as his art too no longer belongs to him. Though the film suggests that if Cracklight was a better husband, he possibly wouldn't have lost his wife it also suggests there is an inevitability to the misunderstandings that exist between he and his wife. The misunderstandings that occur in the creation of art. The inevitability of mortality and of being forgotten. Thank you for watching. If you're looking for good entry points into Greenway's career, this might be the best place to start. Hopefully, someday this film and many of his other films will receive proper restorations. And comment down below if you have any suggestions for films to cover in future videos. See you next time.